Okay, Harley, so we are talking about the importance of understanding and observing animal behavior because this is the key. This is one of the really important keys to getting good wildlife photographs. And when it comes to observing animal behavior, you're the expert. So I thought you could talk, <laughs> well, I've seen it, right? I mean, I can't believe it. you see things are like, like a mile away and you've got your binoculars and you get the bow to the right position. You're amazing. Well, thank you, Rick. So let's talk about the bubble net feeding because I think a lot of people come up here to see that, right? We're well known for bubble feeding in Southeast Alaska, especially in early spring. So the dates on our bubble net feeding are typically three weeks into March and two weeks into April. That's kind of our scope, and it's when the herrings show up to spawn in Sitka Sound. And these whales, they've left Alaska in December. Mm -hmm. They've gone to Hawaii. They've had their babies, and they're on their way back. So they haven't eaten since they've left Alaska, and they've been, they left eating krill, a massive amount of calories, to get to Hawaii, have their youth, and then return. They're nursing the whole way back, five-week wow. trip up to five weeks getting back to Alaska. So they're hungry. They know there's food available in right. Sitka Sound. They know there's food coming. So when they show up, they're gonna, they start working together or as in solitary pairs, depending on our weather, and they start their bubble feeding exercises. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're taking in a massive amount of calories a, a day. They're eating eight to 10 tons of herring a day. Eight to 10 tons? Eight to 10 tons in these. Well, you've been, you've been feeding us pretty well on the boat, so. <laughs> I well, I, I, you know, <laughs> and it's in perspective as a human, yeah. Right. We're, we eat a lot of food, we have great food on the boat, yeah. but these whales, they're voracious and they're, yeah. When the conditions are right and we have sun, and that's another thing with this bubble feeding, we need good conditions. Right. We need not a big swell. We need to be able to see birds, and this is a key. Right. When we see birds schooling up, these whales are typically coming up, and the birds are feeding off of what's coming off the scraps. Yeah, last time I was so here, we're, we're in the wheelhouse here, we see the birds hovering over the water, and the captain says, okay, we, we're just gonna move over there, so we moved over slowly. But here's the thing that I noticed, sometimes they were like right next to the boat, and sometimes they were far away. So as photographers, you really have to be prepared with the telephoto zoom and a wide angle zoom, because they can come right up. Exactly, they could be 200 yards out, or right. you're not sure, you see the birds pop next to the boat, and then they're coming up right next to the boat. So you gotta be ready on both ends of things. Now one thing we'll use, yep. hydrophone. Mm -hmm. This is to listen to the this whales, cool. and this is to, it's a precursor with bubble feeding. Mm -hmm. So if we get into situations where we have the bubble feeding, I'll lower this down about 20 feet, mm -hmm. have it on the bow, someone's there turning it on and off, because I'll stop the engine, right. and we'll listen. And it's amazing. I, I heard this for the first time a few years ago, and I, I couldn't believe it. So there's one whale named Stamp that's a, she's one of the key whales in this area for, mm -hmm. for her unique singing, and she gets the groups together right. to feed. So what she does is she'll go down, and she'll organize the rest of the gang. It could be five whales, it could be two whales, it could be 11 whales. Right. And she'll start singing and it's like, ah, and you'll hear this da, 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 click, 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 click. And then, oh, and it's like an opera. It sounds just wow. like an opera. And then as she gets together, you'll hear the rest of the whales. Ah, and as they reach, They'll, they'll reach their top of a crescendo or a pitch, and it's ah, and that means they're reaching the surface right. and about the surface. And when you hear the top of that, ah, they're coming up. And then you'll see the birds dive, and it's a good way to predict when they're going to come up. We don't know exactly where they're going to come up, but you can kind of tell by the pitch, ah, that top, they're coming up. And so you'll kind of know, this thing's amazing, hydrophone. Um, so that's a big tool in this bubble feeding process. And how long does it last? Like five minutes, one minute, 10 minutes? Don't know? No, I would say typically by the time they get down mm -hmm. there, she organizes, it's a minute and a half to two minute process. Wow. Yeah, for them to get organized. Sometimes longer, you'll hear them clicking away and then maybe they'll, they'll be in the distance and sometimes it could be a little longer, but I'd say 
two to three minutes. Yeah, and you always have to be ready, right? You always have to, and you have the camera table back there, which is really cool. Totally. I actually have the camera table on the, on the bow. On the bow. Have, in the we try to put, and this fills with cameras too. Oh, yeah. We try to make it easy. Someone needs to switch out a lens, boom, boom, they're on the bow. We yeah. keep mats on the bow. That way everyone's prepared with yeah. Maybe two to four lenses. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, you don't depending. know, and you can get great shots with the iPhone too. Right? Oh, totally. Yes, especially, <laughs> especially with the with the new super iPhone. Super great shots this, with this, the iPhone. This is one of my uh, favorite shots, and I use the uh, seventy to two hundred for this because they really weren't that far away. And my tip, tip for a shot like this is use a fast shutter speed. You know, you could get a blurry shot to like add a sense of motion to it, but I use a fast shutter speed of a thousandth of a second to freeze the action, not only <clears throat> of the whales, but these beautiful white birds that were like flying around because they didn't really want them and, blurry. And look at the beautiful white birds, the gulls, that's yeah. your precursor because yeah, they're yeah. feeding on the scraps coming out of the mouth of those whales. Right. Yeah. No, I've seen birds like you see, I've seen birds picking Hearing out of you know just right. as yeah, they're yeah, coming think, down. I, look at this. This is like at, pretty, exactly pretty close to pretty close to the whale's mouth. It is an amazing experience. Another photo tip is exposed for the highlights, meaning that you don't want the highlights overexposed and washed out because they are the birds are just going and the foam. It's just oh. going to it's just going to look like a, a big blur. You know, I saw on your website just right off the back, right the uh, the swim deck. They were only you know just a, a couple of feet and away. And if we get conditions right, it's good to be back there for that event because you're water level. You're not peering down on them, so to speak. Now, you're also saying it usually happens, uh, well, right now in the morning and on sunny days. So they're affected by, I, I'm affected by the weather, so the whales are too. They're affected by the weather, and here's a key point too. Mornings, we'll try to be out there early, catching the light, of course. Yeah. But they're hungrier in the mornings than the evenings. They, you, you notice they're coming further out of the water because they're lighter in the mornings, right. and then by evening, it's like, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're they're heavy, they're not as into it, and then they're going to digest all night and start yeah. again in the morning. Right. Well, I haven't uh, shot any videos, but, you know, what I try to do with the stills is I try to tell the story. So I take the shot of the birds, like, hovering on the water, then the bubbles, and then, you know, as we go through them, lunging. You call it lunging? Lunging. <laughs> call yeah, it lunging. lunging. And a typical lunge could be two whales at a time just lunging or a group of whales yeah. lunging. Now this is an amazing, amazing experience. Some people come up here just to see this, right? Totally. Our springs, this is what we're all about at Alaska Sea Adventures Northern Song is we're all about bubble feeding whales and eagles in the in the spring. That's what we do. And the food. The food on the boat. And the, food. <laughs> and the yes. food and the we service. Have a great chef. You know, again, I don't have any uh, any videos, but my friend Pete Vanderben, when we were down in Antarctica, he shot, he had a drone. This is and, amazing. And you, and you got to see yeah. this video. You know, check this out. Uh, Harley and I will, will be quiet for just a couple, <laughs> couple of uh, seconds here. And look at this one. That was amazing, Rick, and I love the footage because seeing that from a drone perspective yeah, yeah. gives you the whole, the whole circle. circle realm. And these, these wells, I mean, they, they taught us as humans yeah, yeah. how to be more effective. I mean, in the commercial fishing industry, you watch yeah. what these whales do. It's just, it blows my mind. So the whales are here at this time of year, March and April. You got more. You got eagles. There's bald more eagles. We have bald eagles because the eagles come for the event too. This herring event isn't just about whales. I mean, humans come to get the resource yep. for an egg product. We have eagles. They're hungry from a cold winter. They're there to get protein. They're so pretty th much guaranteed the bald eagles. I mean, I yeah, got it. I got amazing. Eagles, <laughs> they're amazing around here because they show up in the droves yeah. and they're hungry also. Now we have sea lions in on this. Yep. And then our new event here around the Sound is gray whales. Um, Ten years ago, we would see maybe five gray whales in yeah. the area. Last year, we had 200, I think they counted 282 gray whales. Yeah. And these gray whales, they've come up from the Baja or, or southern parts, and they're headed to the Chukchi Sea to give birth. Well, they stop in here now, 
and gain protein to continue on their path. So they're gaining calories, so they're not emaciated when they show up yeah. to have their youth in the Chuck GC. So we're seeing a lot of wildlife now and a variety of wildlife for photography events. We've got the orcas. We have the orcas the, also. And you've got otters. And we have a lot of otters in the sound. Um, and depending on what's going on with weather, those otters will school up with great weather and get together and be behind the rock piles holding on to the kelp. Or if it's blowing, they'll kind of disperse and go with the waves wherever they can get protection. Well, Harley, you are amazing. Thank An you. amazing captain, amazing crew. I really encourage you, if you're going to come to Alaska, you might have tried the rest, and now you want to try the best on the Northern Song, which is operated by Alaska Sea Adventures. Yeah, thank you, Rick. Oh, sure, man. That was great. I love a guy who says thank it. you. Yeah, thank you. That was great. No, we've had a great time.